Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at Warhammer 40,000 Fireteam, a two-player head-to-head competitive game um, in the Bookshelf series available from uh, booksellers in the US and the UK. I believe it's available from Game in the UK as well as Barnes & Noble in the US. Um, for my Canadian friends, uh, Barnes & Noble does now ship to Canada again, um, so it's basically available across North America. Now, this is a two-player um, experience in the same vein as games like Warhammer Underworld worlds and kill team but compact down to a kitchen table size it takes about the same amount of real estate on the table um, as the game of warhammer underworlds and uses the same type of pre-built warband um, going at each other in procedurally generated missions so in this one in particular um, there are some lovely uh, hexed 2D gaming boards that are double-sided so it's two different areas each one with a variety of different missions that you can play through now the game box comes with Ultramarines, well, and Space Marines, uh, and Necrons as the two uh, fire teams that are actually in the box. But it comes with rules for four additional fire teams that you can expand it with, which include an Orc Knob Squad, um, the uh, Astro Militarum Scions, Tempesta Scions, some Harlequins, and some Tau Stealth Suits. So if you have access to those models, there are six possible fire team configurations, along with special operations for the campaign system um, and the cards to actually play them in the box. What that does mean with this modularity is we see that there's probably going to be some expansion for this game and there's lots of room for new warbands and fire teams uh, to come through and play. Now what this offers basically is a great introduction to um, skirmish combat and tabletop wargaming in a kind of condensed format. If you have friends who aren't tabletop wargamers, this would be a great way to kind of introduce them to the uh, sort of idea of playing a war game in a 2D format. And it's a nice condensed portable game system. It all fits back in the box when you're done. So uh, we're gonna run through right now, showing a game between the Assault Intercessors and the Deathless Destroyers, which are the Necrons. Um, we'll run through the rules, show you the setup for the game. I've even, because I have these models painted already, uh, got the models in the spruce. So you can see the colored um, push fit. Well, uh, are they push fit? No, they're, no, they are push fit, colored push fit miniatures uh, the game box comes with, and we'll get this underway. So here's our game box components all laid out, including painted examples of the exact same miniatures. So you get in the box, you get a double-sided game board, uh, objective tokens, double-sided themed to both sides of the game board. So Necrons on one side, Imperial stuff on the other. Uh, five Assault Intercessors that you can paint up in any chapter you want, of course. I did mine as my Ultramarines. For the record, that's Cobalt Blue from Green Stuff World. Everyone always asks what color paint that is for the shiny blue. Uh, you've got some Necrons, uh, which, however, if you go and start building them yourself, remember, uh, the fire team requirements in this require you to build five with Goss Blasters and five with Goss Reapers and three Scarab Swarms. So make sure you build half and half. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to use the fire team composition for the Deathless Destroyers. It is on the box right here. You get your cards for your um, models as well as expanded cards for all of these additional models here. So Orcs, Scions, all that stuff. Uh, you get wound tokens. Now, you're gonna notice this looks a lot like Kill Team 2021 rules-wise. It is. I'm gonna wish we had these in the Kill Team 2021 box. Uh, ploy tokens, objective tokens, victory point tokens, activated tokens, uh, and these are objective activated tokens as well. You get your mission cards, which you can see are themed to the two different sides. So this is the Necron table side. This is the like, Imperial Destroyed World side. 14 dice, special operations, which allow you to play a campaign system, targets of opportunity, uh, and then the uh, tracker for the turn here, who has initiative. Um, the turn tracker, which is right here, uh, which is based on who has initiative for the round, and the turning point tracker. So three turning points in the game, each player gets eight turns. It's an interesting format, and we'll kind of talk about that more as I go through the rules. Uh, you get your miniatures, as you can see here, the Space Marines in blue. They just want to be painted as Ultramarines. And in shiny kind of silver, we have the Necrons. So no need to paint if you don't want to, and even some push fit bases. It's not at least you get your rule book here, which has an introduction to the game. Object, of course, to score more victory points and inventory of the components, like I just went through. And how to set up and fight a mission, which we'll do right now. So first thing first, we grab ourselves a mission. We are going to be playing Power Up. A series of shield generators offers protection in this area if you can live long enough to get them working. Place the kill zone board with a side picture and the mission card face up. The board should be placed so the long edges are facing the players. The board is referred to as the kill zone in these rules. Place any objective tokens in specific hexes shown on the map. That's all of these exclamation points. So now the objective tokens are double sided. Uh, Necron board side, Humi board side. Uh, across the middle, looks like there's gonna be one, two, three. So one, two, and three, they're four apart. One, two, three, four, so in the middle. And then the other two are one, two, three down. 
So one, two, three, so here. And uh, here. The cards and stratagem cards face up on the playing surface, whether you can easily reference them. Uh, place the turn tracker and um, turning point tracker on the board. Put the turning point marker down, and then put the turning point to one side. Initiative marker goes next to it. Tokens and dice go to one side. So wounds, our ploys, um, our objective controls, our activated, uh, our victory point markers, our dice. We're not using any of this stuff because these are all for the other kill teams. These are our other missions that we're not playing with. Models go here, uh, and we are ready to set up the rest. Mission rules for this one. Operatives within one hex of an objective mission um, token can use the following action. Power up. Place a mission token next to the objective that's within one hex of the operative making the action. That oper objective is now empowered. Friendly operatives within one hex increase their defense characteristic by one. Discard all mission tokens in each end phase. Scoring rules, the end of each firefight phase, place uh, players score one VP for each objective they control, and additional one VP for each powered objective they control. Victory, the mission ends after three turns, uh, three turning points, sorry. When the mission ends, the players with the most VP wins. If you have the same, you draw. Other things on here, we have hexes of the red border. They're blocked, they can't be moved or seen through. Hexes with a broken white border are cover, and you get an extra um, uh, uh, defense, sorry, you lose a defense dice in there, but you get an automatic success. And then uh, hexes with the exclamation mark, of course, the objectives. So now the players roll off. A roll off is when you roll a die each. Whoever rolls the highest score wins. You re-roll draws. Now, uh, I'm going to add eight sort of tesseracty green Necron dice to this. And for the Marines, use the white dice provided in the box so that when I roll, you can see an opposed roll and know whose dice is whose. Uh, so right here, we've got one for the Necrons, one for the Marines. And rolling off, the Marines win with a three to a two. Now, beginning with the winner, both players generate three targets of opportunity, which is these cards. And these can each be played for additional bonus points. Now, there's a single combined deck, meaning if you have one of these targets of opportunity, your opponent does not. So for the Necrons, we've got Take Cover after an officer. Actually, these would technically be the Marines. I just dealt them to the wrong side, but the first three would go down to the Marines. After an operative's action, each friendly operative in cover, uh, sorry, operative in a he cover hex or in a hex adjacent to a blocked hex. So you have to all be next to a block tex or in cover and you'll score an extra VP after somebody's activation. Act of Bravery, after an operative's activation, each surviving friendly operative is visible to one or more enemy operatives. So you have to all be in line of sight. And make it personal after a friendly operative's activation, an enemy operative that was adjacent to that friendly operative during the friendly operative's activation was taken down. So kill somebody you're next to. The Necrons, we have Take the High Ground. In the end phase, you control one or more objectives, or in the end phase, enemy operatives with a combined wounds characteristic of 12 or more were taken down during the turning point for one. Clean kill. Uh, after no operative's activation, an enemy operative is taken down, and that enemy operative has no wound counters next to them at the being in the current turning point. So you kill somebody all the way from healthy. And then maintain your position. In the end phase, you control more objectives than your opponent, or in the end phase, the combined wound characteristic total of enemy operatives that have been taken down is greater than that of friendly operatives taken down. I was trying to murder. Marines trying to hold ground. The winner then places one of their operatives in one of the starting hexes from the mission map. All the starting hexes that share a color and icon with the hex of the player's territory. All the starting hexes with the other color and icon are the enemy's territory. Back and forth placing. Now, uh, of these models, the uh, swarms, you may notice there's only 10 deployment squares. So there's three, 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 and one. Um, the scarab swarms actually don't deploy during normal deployment. At the end of deployment, they get placed adjacent to a Necron warrior uh, in contact with a, uh, a point of their territory. Special rule, they get bonus dudes. So the Marines go first. Um, they're going to choose the blue territory or the white territory. Let's choose the iron halo. And deploy here for the first one. The Necrons would then be able to go opposite, choosing uh, blue squares. So they're going to have to deploy over here anyway. So Goss Reapers are real good up close. Next up over here is also Space Marine territory. Uh, more the merrier. <laughs> it's going to get filled eventually. Never divide the team. So another Marine hanging out over here. And with the advantage of numbers, you might as well just put these guys right next to each other. Uh, and then the Marines' remaining deployments will be here. Another Necron Warrior can go down somewhere further away. So let's say that's not Marine Territory. The Marine Territory would be here or up here. Let's go up here. And that would put a Necron perhaps here. I would put the Sarge on this hex because that was a blue hex. I keep messing up the colors. I keep looking at the Ultramarines and thinking they're blue. <laughs> uh, they're, they're in the blue territory, rather, which I probably should have done. Uh, another Necron Warrior to put over here with a longer range gun. 
And the last Space Marine deploying in this hex. One side is done deploying. The remaining models get put down until they fill up territory. Now there are only 10 hexes to deploy in and that means that the Necrons will completely fill with their warriors the remaining squares. When that's done, the special rule for Scarabs is they get placed immediately after deployment adjacent to a Necron warrior and not adjacent to a um, objective hex. So I couldn't, for instance, put one here to score this objective. I have to place it down here. We danger close, so why not? Now the other half of that rule is after I finish a Necron Warrior, you must immediately activate one operative with this ability that has not already been activated. If there's no such operatives, this ability has no effect. So after from the Necron Warrior activates, we must activate, we chain activate a scare. Worth noting that the targets of opportunity, um, after they're drawn, the person with the initiative can actually discard and draw uh, ones they don't like to try and get ones they do. They discard a number of cards and then draw up equal to the number that they discarded. Obviously for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna hold on the ones I have to demonstrate how they work. For informative purposes, not good at winning purposes. So now we're into the turning points. So this is how the game is actually played. Uh, there are three turning points and they start off with an initiative phase, which is a roll off. So Necron's green. They win the roll this time, and after deployment, have the initiative in the first turn. So then there's a strategy phase where they reveal targets. So they have to reveal uh, a, a target and then play a strategic ploy. Uh, strategic plays are a lot like the ones in Kill Team 2021, and they do not require any kind of like asset. You just pick one and it's active for the turn. First reveal a target. Well, which one of these targets opportunity do we want? We could do a clean kill, uh, kill someone that wasn't wounded at the start of the turn. That seems like a good one for the first turn. Uh, take the high ground, control more objectives, or kill someone with 12 or more wounds. So kill any space marine. Either of these could work. I feel like this one is best for the first turn, clean kill, because no one's wounded at the first start of the first turn. Uh, going for active bravery for the Space Marines, after an opponent's activation, or an operative's activation, every surviving operative is visible to one or more enemy operatives. Well, I mean, that's gonna be hard not to be, so it just seems like a free point. Ploys, the Necrons have to go first. They can do reanimation protocols, won't be useful in the first turn. Roll a dice for each Necron warrior that's been taken down. On a six, place one of those Necron warriors on a hex in their own territory and give each Necron warrior placed in this way an activation token. So you can bring guys back to life. Advanced combat protocols, um, it lets you override their basic combat protocol special rule where they can do um, uh, an action more than once per turn. Dimensional corridor, pick a friendly operative, place that operative in an empty hex that does not contain an objective token, nor is adjacent to a hex that contains an objective token. That gives them an, operative an activation token. So they can teleport across the board, but they can't do anything afterwards. First turn, we want to kill something. I feel like advanced combat protocols on this guy is gonna be a cool one, because maybe he can zap this sergeant. This doesn't block line of sight. For the Assault Intercessors, they have My Faith is My Shield. Uh, give an operative a ploy token, remind you, add a defense to their characteristic, to a, a, one die to their defense characteristic until the end of the turning point. Uh, combat Doctrines, <laughs> your weapons hit on twos. And for the Emperor, pick a friendly operative, give them a token to remind you. To the end of the curve, not a turning point, they count as two models for determining who controls an objective. And that's at the end of an activation, the person with the most models adjacent to it. So uh, the Scarabs never count, but I could have one of my Marines count as two. I feel like Sarge doesn't want to die. So he'll take an extra defense dice for my fate as my shield. And with ploys now played um, and completing targets of opportunity, they'll all have a call out as to when. This one's as soon as the opera's taken down, that had no wound counters, started the turning point. And this one's after an opera's activation, each uh, friendly operative is visible. Some would be in the end phase, which would be the end of all eight turns or 16 activations. Um, and then firefight phase. So during a firefight phase, you pick, uh, starting with the person with initiative, an operative to take actions up to your APL. So everyone's got two APL on the table right now. If you've already activated, you can't be activated again until everyone in the team also has an activation marker and you have a fixed APL of one. So you can kind of overwatch in this a bit like in Kill Team 2021 and keep activating, but you'll be doing one AP per activation at that point, which means typically the Space Marines will go five times at full AP and then three times at one. The Necrons, of course, have 13 guys here, but they have to chain activate um, a Scarab Swarm after a Necron Warrior. You can use their weapons, which all have an AP cost. In this case on the board, they're all AP one. They can move for an AP, which is move their move allowance in hexes. Uh, if you begin an adjacent to a um, uh, an enemy model, you can't make a move action. You have to fall back to not be adjacent first, but you can move by during a move as long as you don't start there. Uh, you can attack with your weapon uh, in range, and you can disengage, which is the fall back to not be within a hex, or you can wait. And that's if you can't do anything else, you have to burn your AP by waiting. Moving to blocked hexes, um, and any hex that contains an operative, friendly or otherwise, is considered to be a blocked hex. 
An operative that's adjacent to one or more enemy operatives that's a hex next to them cannot make a move action. Many missions include objectives as shown in the mission map. A player gains control of an objective if at either player's turn they have more friendly operatives than one hex of uh, it than there are enemy operatives. Place a control token in the same hex as the objective to show which player controls it. Once an objective um, a player gains control of it, it remains under their control until another player gains control of it. Uh, empty hexes uh, are referred to, and they're not blocked hexes and do not contain a friendly or enemy operative, in addition to any other types that they have. So a hex can be a cover hex or an empty hex, for example, but empty hexes can contain tokens, like objective tokens or mission tokens. An attack action is going to feel very similar to those people uh, who've already played um, Kill Team 2021. Uh, you will spend the AP from your APL on your attack. You'll check range in hexes, and you also have to have line of sight, which means that the, the center of center of your uh, your shooting hex to the target hex has to be unblocked by a block hex or a model. Um, then you pick up the number of dice as you're attacking with. So let's say this Goss Flare uh, right here was going to attack the Sarge. He would roll four dice and look for your hit values. In this case, a three plus. All misses. Sweet. Let's try that again. <laughs> Bad demonstration. So there is one, two, three hits. Now a six is a critical hit. A one is always a miss. Uh, then the target would roll the defense dice, even in melee, and this is a good example of a difference between this and Kill Team 2021, um, rolling to defend and generate blocks. So for the Space Marines, again, a bit different from Kill Team, three defense dice, but only save on fours. And there's two blocks. So each block will cancel a hit or a critical hit, but critical hits are always canceled last. Then you sum up the remaining damage, so in this case, one net hit. And that would be not critical, so three points of damage would go on to Sarge. With a wound counter, and if you ever have wound counters equal to your wounds, you are dead and removed. Actions any number of times that you want, provided you don't have a rule like these Necrons have, which is the basic combat protocols. Of course, we're overriding it on him. Engage, like I said, it's the only action you can make when you're adjacent you want to move. You have to be able to move to a non-adjacent hex, though, so if you can't do that, you can't disengage. And then wait, of course, if you just got to burn your AP because you can't do anything else. The end phase, remove all ploy and activation tokens from the kill zone and move the turning point token to the next turning point. And once it's complete, the turning point is over and you're ready to begin the next turning point. The final end phase will be described on your mission card, add up the total of any VPs that you've scored and add together the ones from your target of opportunities, the person with the most wins, anything else is a draw. Necron's going first and they need to activate. Well, I think he's gonna do it before he dies. Uh, Mr. Necron with the Goss Flare, or Reaper rather, is gonna activate and shoot Sarge. Now he has the ability to shoot twice, but he also really liked to push that button. Uh, so we'll see if he kills Sarge first. <laughs> five dice, Goss Reaper, range five, he's within about five, five attack dice, threes to hit, three, six damage. Threes, oh, crit and three hits. So Sarge is going to have to get lucky here. He's got four defense dice for my faith is my shield. So he could do this if he rolls all four pluses. He rolls no four pluses. Oh no, Sarge. All right, well, Sarge just got murdered because that's going to be six plus nine is 15 damage. He has one hit point left. It's a strong showing. So it's very tempting to just do that again. Uh, or try and gain control of the objective. I think we do. I think we actually do try and gain control of the objective because he won't be able to move again this turn. So this feels a little bit wasted, but there's lots of things that could kill Sarge after this. Ends his move there. His objective token now claims the objective. And here's why that works out for Sarge because the Canoptic Scarabs activate immediately afterwards. They'll make a move. One, two, three. And then fight with their feeder mandibles. They don't have to do one damage. Eight attack dice on fives, one, three damage. Getting through a single point of damage is what they do. If they roll five, five pluses, this is unblockable. How about two? <laughs> well, Sarge has four defense dice right now because of my faith is my shield. If he just rolls two, four pluses, which is the odds, he will live. And he does. So two successes on fours, block two successes on fives, no damage done. And that scare gets an activated token. He's feeling great. So I think he needs to go next just so that he can even get to use his um, Inspiring Commander ability. And what he really wants to do is take back this zone. Now, unfortunately, he's going to be in line of fire all over the place here. So I think he has to do it with his pistol and then move afterwards. He's not going to overcharge, though, because if he rolls a single one, he'll die. <laughs> so four shots with his pistol. He's land two hits to kill this Necron Warrior. Hitting on threes, four, six damage. He gets two hits. Can the Necron dot block it? He's got three dice on fives. 
doesn't block any of it, takes four damage from the plasma pistol, and dies. Sarge would really like to walk over and claim that objective, but unfortunately he cannot because he has um, to make a fallback action do so. So he's going to go back to his chainsword, I think, for his second AP, and he's just going to start stabbing that Scarab Swarm. So five dice on threes. Hits with everything. It's only 15 damage to the 10 wounds it has. Three dice on fives to block. Blocks none of it, takes 15 damage, and he just massacres these scarabs. And he'll take their activated token. Um, he gets to hand out an additional AP to somebody. There's lots of people that could get it. These guys are going to get just jacked up, I think, unless these scarabs get killed. You guys are far away. I was thinking this guy over here, I think I'm going to give it to him. It was the second half of the first turn, so we are on to the first half of the second turn. Uh, these guys are going to chain activate, so it feels like getting the jump on these marines is a good idea. Necrons can't go twice, unfortunately. But they can walk, one, two, and then start blasting. It's Reaper, five dice on threes into that marine. Bang! Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, two crits and two hits. That marine's got three defense dice on a four plus to try and stop it. Blocks one hit, but that's still going to be six, twelve. Plus three is 15 damage. He's down to one hit point two. Buddy Speedy goes and says, one, two. We're gonna get in the thick of this and attack you with our mandibles. Eight dice. Fives. Oh, there's a crit and two hits. He needs to succeed with all of these on a four plus to live. Otherwise that Marine's down and this clean kill gets scored. Oh, so close, but even one damage getting through, but the crit actually does get through. For three, kills this Marine without even having activated. And that will score a clean kill. No wounds on him at the beginning of the turning point. These guys get activated tokens. And it's second action for the Marines. You who has the uh, activated token. Well, I think these guys need to die. Uh, so that's going to be up to this Marine. He's going to go... One, two, three. And that will claim this. For the Space Marines. And then he'll fire his bolt pistol here. Three dice. He's within five hexes. I'm sorry, four dice actually, hitting on threes. A crit and two hits. So two five ups, three five up saves for that Necron Warrior. If he does not uh, block two of these, he is dead. He only blocks one with a six. So that's five plus three, five for a crit, three for a normal, and that'll kill this Necron Warrior. He is now done. Well, the Necrons have another chance here to try and kill this guy. But unfortunately, there'll be no shot first. So I think we actually try and shoot with him. He's going to move and go one, two, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for this Necron Warrior who has a 10 hex range. Blocked, so that'll be five dice, four dice, sorry for a Goss Flare, hitting on three plus, three, five damage. Uh, two hits. That Marine can try and block it. He's got three defense dice on a four plus. Blocks one, so he'll take three damage. And have 13 left. So the Scarab Chain activates and goes one, two, three, four. Can't hold the objective, but still worth being over there. Uh, he gets his eight dice, hitting on fives, one, three damage. He chomp, chomp, chomps for three, two hits, and a crit. Three defense dice for that ring back. Blocks two, takes a crit though for three more damage, goes to six. Out of his 16. Right, die. Uh, there we go. <laughs> some of the some of the threes are tens, three five ten. Some of the threes are three five. Both those Necrons get activated tokens. So it's third action now for the Marines. No way for him to get unobstructed line of fire because it has to go through the center of a hex that isn't blocked. So I think we're safe to go over here, and he's got three AP. So you go one two three one two three, and then start chain sorting, which I think is what he's gonna do. Extra AP from the Sarge. Chainsword, five dice, three plus, three five damage. He says to get a hit and a crit through to kill him. Uh, how about three hits and two crits? I don't even think, it actually doesn't matter what gets rolled right now, because even three successes on five, and once he gets two, he's still gonna take 13 damage, and he only has eight. That guy gets nuked. We'll score the zone for the Marines, or at least activate it. Activation token. Fourth action for the Necrons. Well, this guy can also walk up and try and kill this Marine. So going one, two, or one, to be unblocked. Scarab's left the chain activate, so just blast him with a Goss Reaper. He's got his five dice, hitting on threes. Ooh, that's a crit and three hits. 
into that poor Assault Intercessor. So three defense dice, passes one, but that's still going to be five. Sorry, six plus six is 12 damage, four left. Is this Marine left? Time to get stabby, I think. He's going to chainsaw him. Two dice with his chainsword, three, five damage on threes. Looks like three hits, only nine. This won't kill the Scarab. So unfortunately, no falling back to hold that objective. Scarab saving on fives, doesn't save any. Takes nine. He's gonna have to stab again. At nine health, doesn't kill him. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's not even blockable at that point. He's needed one more damage, but it kills the Scarab Swarm. But he's stuck in melee. Didn't have the AP to fall back. Into the fifth turn now for the Necrons. They have five, four warriors over here unactivated. Oh man, well, I think uh, taking a shot. Gas Flare's got four dice, hitting on threes. So that's a hit and a crit. Three defense dice back for that poor Marine. No cover or anything, blocks one. So with a Gauss Flare, that's gonna be five damage. Take a second action, but he wants to be able to contest this. He's gonna go one, two. He just needs to live and then everything will be fine. Bottom of five. One AP for one of these Marines. He doesn't want to die. And these guys could take a shot at him, but I think the most important thing is we flip this by taking a step. We'll go one, two, three with Sarge. And that will flip this token along to the Marines. Back to the Necrons. They can once again attempt to kill this Marine by going one, two to here and then taking a shot with that Gauss Flare. Shots on threes into that poor Marine. He's got five wounds on him, two hits. Do any get blocked? Uh, nothing, nothing. So six damage, he goes to 11. Oh man, we'd, we'd like to make a save at some point here, fellas. Back to the Marines. They have three potential turns left. Pushing buttons would be good. Pushing buttons would keep us alive. You aren't gonna get, no one can get shot again. I don't think, I don't think anyone can get line of fire on anybody. These Necrons are just gonna move. So I think it's worthwhile to push buttons at this point. We could also clear out some guys. Well, thing the first, just to make it happen, we'll spend one AP just to make a fallback move here. And that way we can claim this. Seventh for the Necrons. Pretty much everyone's activated. There's no way to gain line of sight through this. He can't see through his friend or him. That was our one chance to kill that Marine. So he'll go one, he'll go one, two to this and just flip it, because why wouldn't he? Be done. And then it's the marine half. Do we clear Necrons or do we push buttons? I think we push a button here to try and protect Sarge. We don't do that, we fire a plasma pistol. We're gonna fire a plasma pistol. One, two, three, four, five. Can't do it here. It's part of the, the scare. Four dice hitting on three is not overcharged because we don't want to die. Well, that's significant. Uh, and then three defense dice blocks one. So still takes 12, 16 damage. Bye, Scarab Swarm. Not super important because everybody here is really wounded and we needed to not have lots of chain activations happen onto us. So eighth turn for the Necrons. They have one unactivated Necron Warrior. You can't really see anybody. He's just gonna go one, two, I think, and then have to wait for a second action. End phase, so scoring, clean kill was scored. Oh, sorry, uh, active bravery was definitely scored at a bunch of points. Uh, actually, I think probably just the first activation. <laughs> and then the Marines have got four points for scoring um, objectives, and, and they actually have one action left, sorry. They will, do they wanna shoot something or push a button? They want to shoot something. He's gonna shoot with his chainsword. He's gonna shoot his pistol, <laughs> idiot. Uh, so threes to hit into this Goss Reaper. Nah, this Goss Reaper. Two crits and a hit. Does anything get blocked? No. So he'll take five, 10, 13. Get pulverized. Um, so with that done, it's now the end point. So both these were scored for one each. And then the Marines hold one, two, three, four points worth of territory. Uh, the Necrons hold one. So one for the Necrons with their clean kill, four for the Marines. And that puts it at five to two, although the Marines are just hanging on. Turning points, and we go to see who is the initiative holder. 
It's gonna be the Marines this time winning the roll. So they gain the initiative, which means they have to declare their target of opportunity first. Like make it personal is gonna be the one after friendly operatives activation, enemy operatives adjacent is taken down. Yeah, you're, you're going down. And for the Necrons, uh, either take the high ground, which is control one or more objectives, or in the end phase, uh, enemy operatives with a combined wound characteristic total of 12 or more taken down. Mmm, that feels like the, the right one. These Marines die, we'll score it. Uh, and then we're on to now our ploys. Oh my god. For the Emperor, count as two instead of one. Combat Doctrines hit on twos. Or my faith is my shield. My faith is my shield is... I mean, all of these would be good. <laughs> I don't think any of them would happen. If the Sarge goes first, which I think he's going to because he's just hanging on, he could kill, hit the button, and then have five defense dice potentially to try and survive. I think we're going to do that. Faith is my shield again. And then the Necrons are actually going to use reanimation protocols and see if any of these Necron warriors can come back. So four dead warriors. The Scarabs can't come back. But on sixes, they reanimate. Nothing. Deployment hex. I mean, we kind of refilled this side over here and started the offensive on this side again. Marines get to go first. And that means, like, I think my plan is the same. Go with Sarge. Uh, he has the first turn of the second turning point. And he will empower this so that it gains an extra victory point for the Marines, but also gives an extra defense dice. And then plasma pistol this gent. So it's four dice to the plasma pistol. He's not going to overcharge because, yet again, he doesn't want to die. Uh, he can't see anybody except for this warrior. He could, and he doesn't want to kill him. So yeah, he's going to kill that one Necron warrior. Well, that's pretty good. Crit and two, three hits. That Necron warrior has three defense dice on fives. Doesn't block anything, it just gets slagged. Pick up all these activation tokens too. Ash. That was part of the end phase. And some of them are buried under their hideous amount of wound counters. <laughs> one AP, two AP. Uh, if that's done, uh, he's going to assign his extra... Um, action. So you may just die right now. You're very, you're living on a prayer. You're probably not going to die. You might die too. <clears throat> Everyone we could give the extra action to, it's dicey. You could hit the button, move into cover. I think we still give it to him and just hope he lives. And so that's them done. Flipping to the first activation for the Necrons now. Well, not wanting to score, make it personal. Uh, I think this Necron falls back for one. And then blasts this guy with his Goss Blaster. Just straight up get rid of the ability to do make it personal. And hopefully just kill him before he can use his bonus AP. Hit on threes, four dice. That's three hits. Defense dice back. He could survive. How many does he have? 11? He could survive one hit. So he has to get past four of these. Or two of these. He does. So he takes one three damage hit and goes to 14 out of 16. Round's done. Doesn't take the objective away. So I guess that Marine goes. It's now or never. Free AP. I think he just starts... Uh, he, he really wants to get make it personal before he dies. But he's gonna... No, he's gonna activate the button. Because no other Necron can get to this thing. He's gonna move. One, two, three. That doesn't help. This one he can't see from. He has to kill him in melee. One, two, three. Mm, we'd still hold that, actually. Let's switch sides until at the end of the turn. So I have to kill him in one go, though. One, two, three. That's the second AP. Third AP. He's going to try and stab. Is it better to do that? It's really not. I have to kill him up close and personal. The other option is he could try and get it during his activation, but he'd have to live. Yeah, I think we actually just hit the button, second AP move into here, third AP shoot our pistol. Feels like the better, the better play. So we're within one, two, three, four, five. Try and kill him. Uh, three hits, which would do it, nine damage. That worry doesn't really single five plus. Gets one, takes six. He's still alive. That Marine is done. But he's got three defense dice, one auto success. It's over to the Necron's second activation, and I think, well, I don't know, all signs point to this. Take a step, blast with the Goss Blaster, or the Goss Reaper. It's on threes, kill this guy before he can kill you. Mm, three hits, 12. He can survive one basic hit, so he has to pass two of these. Doesn't, he's dead. 
He gets two, so he goes to three damage on a Goss Reaper base. Yep. So uh, 15 damage he's at now to 16. So close, almost took it back. Well, Amarine's safe. No Necrons are coming to get him right now, so we can do something else over here. The easy thing is, this Marine goes. One, two, three, four, five. No, because he's going to kill him. He's going to go one, two, and he's going to flip the switch. That zone captured for chaos, and he's all done. Not captured for chaos. Uh, and that was his three, so it goes to three for the Necrons. Well, see if you can kill him. Go. Uh, you, mm, you still get to push the button. You can't see over here, but if you stood one, two, you'd be able to see him. He can kill the Sarge. Maybe. Yeah. One, two. And take a shot. Flare, four dice, hitting on threes. Just needs to do one damage. Oh, only one hit. So he's got an auto success. Uh, actually, he doesn't have cover. He's just got four defense dice. Get a four. He gets two. He blocks the one success and stops it. Well, then, back to the Marines. This fella It's going to take a step. For one, stab for two. Is that chainsaw to hit and a crit kill him? Threes, zero. Oh my god, he's alive. Uh, next Necron that <laughs> tries to finish him off goes one, two, and takes a shot. Dude, Sarge, who's more dangerous? Sarge. That's four Goss Reaper with flare attacks, two hits, one's a crit, four defense dice on Sarge still. Oh, he only blocked one, so Sarge is down. But that remains the Marines. So five for the Marines. And everyone's gone, so someone's going to get one AP. I think you go and just try and kill unactivated guy. No, try and kill the guy who's actually contesting. Four pistol dice. I don't know, you can't see. But he can't see either. So try and kill the far guy who's already wounded. Just need to do two damage. He's within five. So four dice on threes. Oh, that'll do it. Uh, crit and three hits. Two six or sorry, yeah, two successes back, but that's still going to be eight damage. I'll wipe this guy out. And so the Necrons have no unactivated warriors left, but they get to do some stuff. They need to get in the war. So I think this guy just goes one two, and this flips. I'll get them scoring again. Round six for the Marines. Uh, he's gonna shoot again into the one he can see. He won't be able to get it back for the next two turns, but he can fight to get it back. That's four shots of the bull pistol. On threes. That's a crit and two hits. Three defense dice back for the Necron Warrior on fives. Blocks one, but still eight damage. That'll kill him too. We're back though. Back to the Necrons. Uh, I think he's gonna push the button now. Which flips it all the way, because he controls it. And they're robbing the Marines of some points. So seventh action for the Marines. I think worth it to blast him before he pushes the button again. He's within one, two, three, four, five. So shoot him with the bolt pistol on threes from that Marine cover. I get three hits. He has to block at least, he has to block one to live. Five plus. He does. He takes six damage. He's still alive. And that means on their seventh action... He could shoot back, or more importantly, he could hold the button for a power point, and gain a defense die. Okay, and they might get some guys back this turn. So the Marines' last action of the turn, probably best to try and clear this. He can't do it in one action because he can't see. It doesn't do any good to kill that guy, so I think we just try and kill her with the chainsword. Fire dice on threes. There's three hits. One to live. One fives. He does. He's got six damage on him. Couldn't seal the deal. And that's end of round. Uh, so actually, the Necrons get one more action. I guess they could try and kill him. He has one wound left. Isn't a lot of points in doing much else. You could shoot him. He's super empowered. He's the easiest one to kill. One we could do in one action. So, and he had a free block, actually, I forgot, from being in cover. Um, so he'll make his action. He has a Goss Flare with a blade. So four dice, three plus, three five for his uh, Reaper Blade. Threes. Ugh, a crit. And two hits. Three defense dice from that Marine. He needs to hit all of these. Four times. Nope, he's dead. Big swing for those Necrons. So that's going to swing this in the Necrons' favor at the end of the round. 
Uh, and that was the last activation of the second round. So high ground, he definitely uh, took out enemy characteristics uh, 12 wounds or more and also controls one of our objectives. Make it personal, didn't manage to do it. So didn't get scored. Didn't kill the guy adjacent. Ugh. And scoring, uh, two held by the Marines, uh, plus two empowered for four. We'll take them to eight total. Three with two empowered is plus five for the Necrons, which takes them to six. So six, eight to nine right Third now. turning point. Oh man, initiative. This is closer than I thought it was gonna be. Not a lot of Marines left, not a lot of Necrons left. Necrons are going first. It's gonna be target of opportunity, maintain your position, control more objectives than your opponent, or at the end of the phase, the combined wound characteristic total of enemy operatives that have been taken down is greater than that of friendly operatives that have been taken down. That's gonna be hard to do. Hopefully just control more objectives. And the Marines take cover after an operative's activation. Each friendly operative is in cover hex, or hex, we'll just get that one because we're both in cover right now. One of us lives through the first turn. <laughs> so ploys, obviously reanimation protocols are gonna be crazy important here. So there are two, four, six, seven Necrons down. Every six is one that comes back to life with an activated token. Three come back. That's not great. And they can come back on any hex. This is this one's ours. Any hex that was a deployment hex. So for them, that means these three here. So how about a Gauss Rifle for one, who's activated? Because they can shoot 10. A Gauss Rifle for, oh, how about this, a Gauss Reaper? Yeah, yeah boy, and then a Gauss Rifle, or a Gauss Reaper over here. An activated token. I mean, there's so few models left that having activated tokens isn't gonna matter a huge amount, I don't think. Uh, and they have the initiative. So then ploys for the Space Marines. What do they want to do this turn? Faith is my shield for the Emperor. I think for the Emperor. I think we go for the Emperor and he's gonna count as two models instead of one. Try not to die. So that's it. It is a first action of the first turning point. And these guys really want to kill a, kill a Space Marine if they can. Three that can do two APs worth of stuff. Hmm. We need to get two models on here or kill this guy. I think kill this guy is the way. He has 14 wounds on him, so take a step one, two, and then blast him. It's the Gauss Rifle, hitting on threes. A crit and three hits. I think he dies no matter what here because he only has three defense dice. One's an auto success and the other two, one passes. So the crit and one hit go through. That's eight damage, he's toast. So it flips this at the end of the activation. Actually, it stays the way it was. Yeah, no, he got for the Emperor. That's right, he counted as two models. Um, if he'd lived, this would have flipped to the Marines, but it doesn't, it stays there. But at the end of an operative's activation, uh, everybody's in cover, so we gain, take cover. He is now activated. For the Marines, uh, I guess we try and kill. We push the button, try and kill. Yeah. Push the button for defense, try and kill him. Two, three, four, five, he's in range. So four shots of the bullet pistol, hitting on threes. One hit, that's all he needs. Just don't get a success. He doesn't, smokes him. Uh, second action for the Necrons. I think easy stuff first. Uh, he will empower this button for one. And there's no way to get it back now because it's the last turn. So he'll just go one, two, try and get into range for later on. Uh, one, two to there, actually, trying to get in range with this Reaper. Well, you're just gonna move, I think. Ah, you're safe here. Nah, shoot. Shoot this guy and kill him. You can kill him, he only has, there's no way for this objective to get taken afterwards, but he's only got the one AP. So take a shot, hit him with the bolt pistol, on threes. That's it, nine's enough. Not get a success here. No, he's dead. That kills him. Third activation for the Necrons and everyone has an activated counter. So there's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six activation tokens left, or actions left for the Necrons. If he dies, they can just freely do whatever they want, but only one, ah, has he got line of fire? He does actually, so he could do it. I think he does with his Goss Reaper, because this is the best chance of killing him. Now he's in cover and powered right now, so he's gonna be very hard to kill, but it's five dice on threes. A crit and two hits. So he'll have one auto success and still three dice because of the powered up uh, objective token. 
And he doesn't pass any. That kills him. I think. Uh, no, he has one success. So he's going to take nine damage. He has six. No, he's got one health left. So he goes to 15. Oh, that was close. I think he's getting shot back at now. He can get finished off. Uh, that'll be five, four dice for the bolt pistol. Two hits. He's got six wounds on him, so he's got to pass two of these. Passes one, he'll take three, and then he'll kill him. Well, <laughs> fourth action for the Necrons. They can either keep trying to do this. They're going to score one, two, three, four right now at the end of the turn, which will take them to 10, 12, 13, because they'll control more no matter what. Right now we're scoring three, four, five, plus eight is 13 as well. Uh, so they need to stop him from getting over to this and pushing a button or push a button themselves to go to 14. So I think they just immediately use him to push this button and they'll go to 14. The Marine player gets to go. I think he just goes hell for leather. And he goes one, two, three. Three, tries to get a line of fire. Puts this stone in between them so he can't be seen. He's out of range so he won't get him in the first shot. Fifth action for the Necrons. Ugh. They need to get in the line of fire or they need to take this one. Well, they can do both with this guy. He can go one, two, now well, two to there. Flip it back. It's Marine O'Clock. So he could go take this one, but he wouldn't be in line of fire. Yeah, goes one, two. And it flips. Necron turn. He'll go one, two, and it flips. Then he's gonna get to go and he'll punch this button just to make sure that it's an extra point and it bounces out. Last action for the Necron. He will also punch a button, I guess, to electrify this one. The final marine activation, he can't see anybody because he doesn't have line of fire here. So there's really nothing for him to do and he can't go contest anything. So I think he just waits. At the end of it all, it'll be plus, uh, so three. For maintain your position, they control more objectives. Uh, six, which is nine, plus six is 15 total. So 15, well, sorry, this will go plus six. This will go to 12. He's got plus six for objective points and then three for targets of opportunity. Uh, he'll get plus four, which will take him to 12 as well. 14 for the two that he got. Missing, make it personal. That was it. Missing, missing, make it personal. They lost by one. So it was 14 to 15 for the Marines at the end of the game. It was about as close model count as you could possibly be. So you can see there's an obvious tension between the Marines' ability to quickly kill stuff and their lower um, activation count. They, they end up having one action activations a lot. And the overwhelming force of the initial Necron activations where they're just tag teaming with Scarabs. I think I made the right call trying to take them out as fast as I could. Getting some lucky early ones too, like Crippling Sarge in the first activation was kind of a big deal because Sarge handing out an AP every turn is a uh, kind of a major um, swing for the, the, the Space Marines. Now there are lots of additional things to do here. Uh, there are, geez, tons of objectives. So I think there's six per side, so 12 total. Um, for the, the two sides of the battle mat. And then on top of that, you have your additional stuff, which is playing campaigns. So you choose a fire team, use the same fire team for each mission, start playing by a random mission. Uh, and then after that, uh, the player that wins becomes the agent, and the agent plays a special operation. And then you go back to random mission and then play a special operation. So you, you, go, you go back and forth, basically playing one of your three special operations, and each special operation you earn a battle honor, which you can give out to one of your heroes. So basically, when you pick an opponent, um, you and your opponent will go back and forth, and you're playing at least seven missions, because each player should be able to play one of their special operations and one of their um, their like like core missions on top of it. And you go back and forth, you get special issue war gear. When a player wins a campaign mission, they gain a piece of special issue war gear, shuffle all the cards and play them face down, draw the top card. Um, there's cards that heal people or give temporary boosts. And then battle honors and command assets, when a player wins a special operation, in addition to gaining a special issue war gear card from above, they turn the relevant special operation card over and get a battle honor or command asset. Wins their final special operation first wins the campaign. So if you get to your third one before your opponent, you're considered
closer to win the campaigns. It's kind of a race back and forth to try and win missions to be the one that wins their uh, their final mission. So for instance, uh, Special Operation, the Necron Warriors have been badly synapse damaged, leading to occasional spasms. Roll one dice each time a Necron Warrior activates. On roll of one, subtract one from their move characteristic and one from their attack dice to a minimum of one. Uh, but if you win that sp the first Special Operation, you get a Harvester Battle Honor. When you gain the Battle Honor, pick a Necron Warrior, give that Necron Warrior a ploy token to remind you, add one of the damage and one of the range of their Goss Flayer or Goss Reaper for the rest of the campaign. So lots of really cool things you can play. It's basically like a difficulty boost to the mission, and then, because it's always a random mission, and then you play that special operation uh, as part of the next mission. So you're always playing different missions from the mission deck. Um, you're playing your special operation if you won the last mission, and the person that gets through all three of these like difficulty challenges that increase the mission difficulty for your side is the winner of the overall campaign. You'll get your war gear cards, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can get, like a git find a squig, so there's like, um, battle honors are specific for the orcs and stuff, uh, and then your special operation stuff, issue war gear is like generic, so things like a combat booster, sighted scopes, restoratives, traps, prototype munitions, artillery strikes, Stealth systems, track arounds, deflector fields, and powered shots. Um, and they'll happen as you win games. Basically, you'll get these things. It could be temporary or permanent. Because you have to have a winner to continue a campaign, there is tiebreakers. So basically, there's operators from one fire team in the kill zone, then that player wins. Otherwise, if one fire team controls more objectives, they win. Otherwise, if one fire team has a higher proportion of its operatives in the kill zone at the end of the mission, they win. Otherwise, the players roll off, and the winner of the roll off wins. And that's it. So. There's our core mechanics and a playthrough of fire team. Of course, there are additional fire teams, like I said, um, for us to try this stuff out with, like the 55th Capic Evils, which is a sweet, sweet fire team of um, Tempest of Scions, a knob squad, Git Rush's Bad Lads, uh, a stealth team, and some cool Harlequins. And because all these can be used in Kill Team as well, I'm happy, actually I don't know if they can be used in Kill Team, but these guys definitely can. Um, I'm happy to paint some of this stuff up to keep trying Fire Team out. Modularity means that you're very likely gonna see expansions for this game at some point too, much like the um, the possibility of expansions for the other Space Marine Adventures game where we saw the, the special symbols for chapters. I feel like if this sells well, there will probably be more. So you got Warhammer 40,000 Fire Team, a quick to play uh, in the game, sort of like the, I guess the, it's in the family of Kill Team and things like Warhammer Underworlds, uh, kitchen table game of Warhammer 40,000. So if you're interested in maybe introducing uh, tabletop wargaming to uh, kids, loved ones, partners, uh, anybody who isn't familiar with it already, this sort of fits in your dining room table and is a nice kind of snack sized way of playing 40K. Obviously there's a lot of expansions sort of built into the box and baked in and I'd suspect if that's the case, there's probably more to come. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more Let's Plays in the future. Turn of Ash, how about you? Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Desperate Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.